All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this fall semester. So this is actually our first talk of the semester. Um, <clears throat> and as you may or may not know, uh, we've been actually trying to um, stimulate and, and, and uh, increase, enhance uh, some of the industrial uh, contacts that the department has. And so that to spice up the seminars, uh, we would mix it up between having uh, you know, pure academic research, but also very much tangible uh, uh, industrial uh, guests. And, and this morning, uh, Safi, who will introduce himself better than I will, uh, is actually really coming from uh, the laser applications in biomedical engineering and surgery. You're a physicist as a background. And um, I guess there's a lot of things that I don't. But uh, you're sitting now in Matam. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity for people who are close to the field uh, to see what's going around in, within a few kilometers from here. So uh, welcome, and uh, thanks for, for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to be here, uh, to give a lecture, and to share with you some uh, insight and uh, content uh, from the industrial uh, part, uh, which relate uh, light and uh, biomedical uh, applications. So. Uh, uh, I will start uh, our uh, talk today will be about uh, lasers, laser interactions, uh, laser and tissue interactions, and uh, some uh, medical uh, application. Uh, let's start uh, first with uh, some uh, properties uh, of uh, laser and inter interaction with the tissue. And the first question that uh, we want to ask ourselves, uh, why to use uh, lasers? So uh, first thing, it's uh, selective absorption. Uh, what it mean? For example, if you want uh, to uh, target only uh, hemoglobin, or if you want to target uh, blood vessels, small blood vessels, and, and to coagulate them, uh, we can illuminate with light, that light that absorbs only in hemoglobin. And by this, uh, we, not, uh, we are not uh, damage uh, uh, other uh, layers of uh, the tissue, uh, for example, epidermis, dermis, or other uh, pigment, for example, uh, melanin. Or if you want to target melanin for hair removal, for example, we use lev wavelengths that uh, only absorb in uh, melanin. Uh, secondly, we can deliver the energy uh, almost to any place uh, inside the, the body, whether if it's uh, outside or whether if it's uh, inside uh, with a waveguide. And third, uh, we can focus the energy into a very small spot, uh, which is uh, pretty unique uh, compared to other, uh, RF, uh, other energy uh, solution like an RF bipolar or, or a monopolar. Uh, here we can tighten the light uh, into uh, up to the diffraction limit, which is very small, uh, but of course depends on the wavelength. Uh, when we choose the laser, what we need uh, to uh, take into account, the first thing that we need to take into account is the wavelength. The wavelength, uh, we choose it according to the application, or according to, which, to where we want uh, that the absorption will be. Uh, we want to deliver energy, we want to heat uh, the tissue. So if, for example, we want to heat uh, fat for body contouring application, we are use, we will use the uh, wavelengths that uh, with uh, we use wavelengths uh, that have higher absorption in uh, fat. If we want uh, to target the uh, melanin, uh, sorry, if we want to target the uh, hemoglobin, the hemoglobin here it's a mix of uh, absorption of hemoglobin and hemoglobin uh, oxide, and we can use a uh, five three two nanometer uh, laser, and by this we can coagulate blood vessel. In the long, in the uh, IR region, uh, there is the water absorption, as we see, and the water absorption, it's, uh, uh, it's crucial because uh, our tissue, it's, uh, it's with a lot of uh, water uh, concentration, and uh, there are uh, some uh, peaks in the absorption, as you can see here in uh, 2.94, or uh, even uh, before this, and of course in the long wave IR, uh, and these uh, peaks mean that there is a lot of absorption. It means that the light does not penetrate does not penetrate and, uh, too much because it's absorbed very, very fast. And with this, you can see the penetration depth of a different laser. Here it's a list of uh, laser uh, that uh, available, uh, commercial uh, available. And you can see if we take from the first slide the peak uh, of uh, the laser here around uh, 2.9. And so the laser the, that uh, is the most uh, suitable for this is Ebumyan. With a very uh, uh, with very short uh, penetration depth of a few microns, and 
It's good, it's not good, it's very good because it's superficial, but on the other side, if you want to use it for surgical application and there is bleeding that comes, so uh, this, with this laser we cannot do hemostasis. So we need to take this laser out and put uh, some uh, uh, coagulate uh, device to coagulate the tissue and it's not so comfortable, so we use it for different application. For example, for interaction with hard tissue, for teeth or for bones uh, to cut or to incise. Uh, Near it, there is the CO2 laser with the penetration depth of uh, about uh, 20 micron. And the penetration depth, it's, uh, it's also superficial and it can also tight blood vessels, uh, very narrow blood vessels, which is good for uh, during uh, surgery. But since the absorption is very high and the penetration depth is relatively low, we cannot work with the, uh, with the application that, uh, are that the waveguide is immersed in the water, for example, for uh, working uh, inside the bladder or in the uretra or uh, in a place where there is irrigation during the surgery. And there are other lasers that uh, with a long, uh, relatively long uh, penetration depth that can be used for, uh, co for coagulation or for hemostasis. And here is the list of uh, commercial lasers that are uh, available uh, today uh, on the shelf uh, that uh, can be in all of them are used in the medical uh, surgery. Uh, here is the application, which can be coagulate, ablation, resection, uh, or even uh, stone fragmentation. And the web is here. The technology with it can be a gas laser like CO2 or solid state laser like Nodium Yag or Homium, or a fiber laser like uh, Thulium, and dark laser uh, that also use uh, for a surgery application in the 14, 17 nanometer wavelengths. Uh, once we want to use the laser, we should take into account the interaction of the laser with the tissue. Uh, the two main uh, interactions that uh, we're going to exhibit uh, today are, are the, the photothermal and the photomechanical. Uh, for laser, when we choose laser, we should take into account, we should uh, take into account the power of the laser because this is how we process laser. But the tissue, on the other hand, take into account the energy they deliver to the tissue, but it very depends on the, on the pulse width. Actually, the pulse width and the power, uh, the, the fluence de de determined by the, this, uh, two uh, figures, and with the same, uh, the same energy uh, and the same uh, power, different pulse widths determine different interaction. For example, if we use very short, uh, very short uh, pulse width uh, inside a water, so, uh, a bubble come and then the bubble collapse. There is an uh, optical breakdown. And then there is a, f a mechanical force, like a shock wave, that uh, come to the tissue and make a damage. Assuming the same pulse energy, if one uses a long pulse width of about tens of hundreds of microseconds, so the interaction is photothermal and photomechanical. And if the pulse is shorter than microsecond, the interaction is only photomechanical. Uh, uh, the photodermal effect here you see uh, some uh, image after the usually people in industry take uh, tissue uh, from pig or from other uh, skins or from other uh, uh, tissue type it depends on the model and uh, do some measurement and, and after that you can see the measurement uh, here we see two uh, image uh, one of it is uh, the ablation where there is actually there is no tissue here it's all the tissue was uh, ablate, and here it's the coagulation. The edema here, the edema region here, which is here, it's very very narrow. It's a it's a region uh, where there is now less water, and if we want to to ablate it again, it's a bit problematic because the main agent that absorbs doesn't uh, uh, is not uh, is not being there. Uh, for coagulation, we just we don't want to take out the tissue. We want to coagulate the tissue in order to make a homostasis during the surgery. In terms of uh, temperature, uh, the temperature for uh, coagulation or homostasis is uh, around uh, 65 and a bit uh, more, and for ablation is 100, uh, um, 100 uh, Celsius degree, uh, like uh, water. Uh, above that, uh, can uh, carbonation, carbonization uh, come, and then it's a bit uh, problematic. Of course, there is the ablation. Uh, there is the ablation uh, threshold, which means with which, with which fluence the tissue become to be uh, become uh, uh, 
uh, and ablate. Um, another thing, uh, for example, uh, for uh, the uh, CO2 laser, uh, five joules per centimeter of the ablation threshold. Uh, there is also a thermal uh, relaxation time that we need to take uh, into account if we want to uh, hit very small, uh, oops, very small spot of laser. Uh, yes, if we want to hit a very small uh, area with a laser, so we need to give very short pulls. Uh, otherwise, the heat dissipate and then there is there are damage uh, to what we want to achieve. For example, here you see w uh, the, the coagulate uh, zone. Uh, there is a, it's easy to calculate it, uh, but it depends, of course, on the geometrical uh, uh, aspects of uh, the tissue that uh, we want uh, to consider. Uh, here it's the actually the effect. Uh, we see that uh, with the ultra short uh, laser, the uh, penetration, the uh, ablation, it's very clean. Then the laser can use as a, a surgical uh, scalpel or uh, in order to incise uh, uh, the tissue. If we use uh, a tissue that, uh, uh, sorry, a pulse that it's a bit uh, longer, so then there is a coagulation zone. And if we use a pulse width, which is continuous wavelength for uh, tens of uh, milliseconds, so then there is coagulation zone. Uh, however, for everything, there is medical application that suits for it. If we want, after that we choose laser, we choose the fluence, the power, the pulse width, now we want to deliver. How we can deliver the, the light or the energy inside the body. So if we are speaking about the near IR uh, regime, uh, up to 2.1 or 2.2 uh, micron, there is a uh, wave guys, uh, there is uh, optical uh, fiber which can uh, transmit uh, very good uh, 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 the light uh, and the, uh, of course the, the fiber is uh, inserted uh, into an endoscope or other cytoscope or other scope uh, that is fit for the application. But if we want to deliver a uh, wavelength which is in the IR, which in the IR we see that in the longer VR especially there are uh, the absorption in the water is very high and it's very good for in order to use it as a, uh, as a incision tool. So uh, until uh, 10 years ago, something like this, there was no uh, solution for it. There was not actually flexible solution for it. But in the last 10 years or in the last uh, six, seven years, a waveguide was developed. Uh, that uh, The waveguide, uh, it's different from the optical fiber. The optical fiber is based on total reflection uh, phenomena. Here, it's like a mirror inside because there is a, a silver uh, coating inside the fiber. The fiber is hollow uh, compared to an uh, optical fiber, which is uh, filled with glass. Here, the waveguide, it's, uh, it's empty, it's hollow, and there is uh, some layers of uh, coating, and there is a good, uh, very good uh, 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 transmission or less uh, losses uh, with this that Currently, it's used in a robotic uh, application, in robotic application for surgical, I mean like Da Vinci uh, robot. And in also for other, uh, it's open uh, the use of a CO2 laser to a lot of other uh, application with this uh, waveguide, which is can be bent. There are applications that we want to hit a bulk area, for example, one square centimeter, and we want to do it very accurate. So with an optical fiber, the surgeon, it's a bit problematic to move and see all the parts that there is, uh, there is no overlapping from one side, from the other side, all the area is uh, ablated. So there is a scanner, uh, there are today available uh, 2D uh, scanner on X and on Y, and we can uh, uh, draw with the laser which uh, pattern that we want or to ablate everything or to ablate just part of it. We can control it with, uh, with the software, software application. And now that we want to use a laser, we should uh, take into account the parameter uh, of the laser, which is wavelength, uh, beam size, energy and peak power, uh, how, to guide the, how to guide the light, a scanner and operation mode, if it's continuous, if it's pulse, ultra pulse, if it's one pulse and then release or, or building heat by pulse after pulse, all of it. Uh, if, we, if we want to create, uh, to use the laser as a surgical tool, the ideal laser that is one that we can use 
uh, we can insist the tissue and one there is a bleeding which has happened a lot during the surgery uh, and to, to use it as uh, for hemostasis uh, by uh, decreasing the fluence. Uh, this is the best uh, that we can achieve. Uh, in practice, it's a bit uh, different, uh, but there are some mechanisms that we can uh, use uh, in order to uh, handle with it. And now I would like to uh, explore with you some uh, medical application and very interesting medical application that we can explore a few technology uh, about it is uh, the o for uh, urologic, the first one is uh, BPH, which is uh, prostate hyperplasia. See that a lot of here are uh, men, so uh, all of us actually have uh, this uh, problem, uh, which is uh, become uh, uh, crucial uh, in the long uh, in the age uh, of uh, 60, 70. Uh, it's damaged the quality of life because uh, during the night uh, people need uh, to wake up and to go uh, to the bathroom uh, because. Uh, there is uh, the prostate become bigger and bigger and it's tight on the uh, it's tight on, on the urethra. Uh, if uh, people go to the doctor, so the first uh, solution is uh, with drugs. But if it's after a few years when it's not happened, so there are some surgical solution. Uh, the most popular it's called the TERP, with a transuteral uh, transuteral resection of the prostate, which is used a uh, bipolar uh, RF and uh, glide uh, on the prostate we will see it and by this uh, to uh, uh, increase uh, the tunnel. Uh, let's see a short movie just to explain the application and then we can speak about it. Chronic <coughs> prostatic hyperplasia or BPH refers to enlargement of the prostate gland. This gland is part of a man's reproductive system and makes the fluid that nourishes and carries sperm. The prostate gland is located between the base of the bladder and the beginning of the penis. It surrounds the upper part of the urethra, the passageway for urine from the bladder out through the penis. BPH often begins after age 40. The enlarging prostate can put pressure on the urethra and interfere with normal urination. Problems can include a weak stream of urine, trouble starting or maintaining the urine stream, leaking or dribbling urine, a feeling that the bladder is not empty, frequent or sudden need to urinate, blood in the urine, sudden inability to urinate. If you have BPH, your doctor may prescribe medicine to stop the prostate from growing larger or to relax muscles in the bladder, urethra, and prostate. <coughs> BPH is sometimes treated with surgery through the urethra or the lower abdomen to remove prostate tissue that is putting excess pressure on the urethra. But now, if we want to handle it with the laser, so there are, uh, uh, it, there are a few solutions for it. Uh, as you see, the prostate uh, is, uh, is, is in red color, and there is a lot of uh, hemoglobin uh, concentration inside uh, the uh, prostate. Uh, and as we see here, uh, one of the uh, highest uh, absorption uh, of the hemoglobin, it's in the 532 nanometer, which is in green light uh, laser. And with green light laser, we can deliver energy to the prostate, to ablate the prostate, and to increase the tunnel. Uh, the energy, I'm going to show you a solution from an AMS uh, company, it's called the Green Light Laser, which in this uh, solution, uh, they, they deliver a lot of energy uh, with, uh, uh, through the retra, where the fiber is uh, water-cooled because of the high energy. The fiber here is uh, right uh, to the side because it needs to be very uh, fit uh, to the previous uh, to the previous procedure, uh, which help uh, to reduce the learning curve of the surgeon, which is very important for application in order to be uh, to be commercialized and a lot of surgeons to use it. As you see, all the bubbles, all this procedure is uh, dr uh, done uh, while, while the, uh, there is irrigation through the system in order to, that everything can uh, go uh, smoothly. And of course, the fiber is inserted into the cytoscope. 
and guide you the cytoscope and there is camera. But there are also other solutions uh, for uh, BPH. Uh, with the homium laser, with the homium laser, the, uh, the wavelength is about 2.08, uh, as you can see here, which is uh, relatively highly absorption, uh, relatively, of course, early absorption, but less than the absorption of the hemoglobin. And with this absorption, uh, we based on, uh, on the water absorption. Uh, it's of course an advantage and disadvantage. The disadvantage that uh, uh, everything is uh, fluid, there is irrigation, so the fiber needs to be very close uh, to the tissue that we want uh, to ablate. Uh, on the other thing, it's, uh, all, all the tissue is based on uh, water, so it's absorbed and we can ablate the tissue. Uh, there are two, two main uh, applications. One of it is uh, it's called a uh, hole up, which is a uh, holmium, uh, holmium ablation of the uh, prostate uh, and it's similar to the TERP and it's very, it's very important that the physician uh, will learn it very, very fast and will not, uh, will not have a learning curve, long learning curve which uh, uh, will reduce the number of surgeons that use it in practice. Uh, there is a, uh, and, and by this the also the fiber is a, a fire to the sides and do similar to wh what we see with the granular laser. There is more interesting uh, application, it's called the HOLAP, which is Olmium Enucleation of the Prostate. Uh, by this it's like uh, peeling out an orange, but, without, uh, but from the inside, from the inside out. How it works? First, use the, here it's the just a straight uh, fiber that fire to straight it. Uh, it it's make it easier to the manufacturer uh, to do it, uh, and not every time to manufacture a special uh, fiber. Uh, by this, there is a first there is a need uh, to uh, define uh, the plane of the capsule and to resect uh, the prostate to uh, uh, to take it out from the prostate uh, capsule and then push it to the bladder. After that, two lobes or three lobes are pushed uh, into the bladder. The laser is taken out, and another uh, device is uh, inserted. Uh, it's called the morcelator, which is like a Magimix, you can think about it, which is coming uh, and, and then it uh, resects all the prostate and suck it out. Uh, the main advantage of uh, this uh, method that the prostate, there is no prostate after it. So the prostate is not uh, uh, increase and increase. Uh, in the previous, uh, uh, in the previous uh, solution, like green light laser or holmium ablation of the prostate, the process after a few years uh, still increase and increase and people need to do uh, this uh, uh, procedure again after five, ten years. <coughs> uh, it, it's one of the interest of the, f uh, of the surgeon. Uh, it depends of course of who, but there is a lot, uh, there is uh, another con uh, consideration, it's in the commer commercialization, a uh, consideration of the surgeon uh, as well. So why the laser you dissect from the capsule? The laser is the sex, the most of from its capsule. Yes. And how can you ensure that the capsule will not, will not have a rupture of the capsule? And why the laser is not affecting the capsule itself? Uh, this is the, the main reason that the learning curve of uh, this procedure is very high uh, because it, it's, it's not so uh, trivial to find the exact limit between the uh, capsule and the prostate. But on the other side, can show uh, in the movies that uh, uh, with some mechanical force, uh, people can, surgeon can uh, pull uh, the uh, prostate from the capsule and push it into the bladder. I will show you a short, did I answer your question? Yes, so it's under some visualization or? Yes, of course, it's uh, with the cytoscope, so the physician see everything in the movie. So you also see what he's doing? Yes, yes, of course, it, it must be. Uh, let me show some uh, a short demo about a movie from a very good uh, company uh, sit uh, very close to here in uh, Yoknam. I uh, used to uh, work there in the past. It's called uh, Luminis. And in this movie, uh, we show a very short uh, explanation uh, of uh, Holap and Holep. Uh, if we will have time, the so it's a nice is a movie. The innovation only on the Holep. ablation and enucleation, utilizing the duotone side light laser fiber. 
This is accomplished by initially incising prosthetic tissue down to the level of bladder neck fibers. Surgeons then develop a plane down to surgical capsule extending from bladder neck to the varu. Next, surgeons bridge to a nucleation technique to roll the median lobe up and towards the bladder neck. Depending on the size of the adenoma, the tissue is detached into a single or multiple specimen. This new bridge technique allows the surgeon to learn enucleation on a limited scale, still drawing upon ablation for lateral lobe treatment. And I can show you. Benign prostatic hyperplasia, or BPH. Show you a nice movie that show only the nucleation prostate, uh, the nucleation uh, procedure. This is the demonstration. The incision depth is increased until all circular fibers have been divided in order to identify the surgical capsule of the prostate. And here it's in real what the physician uh, sees through the cytoscope. As you can see the tissue and the water irrigation and how the cut is uh, go. Identification of this plane is very important, as it is the cleavage plane along which the whole adenoma is shelled out. The incisions are then lengthened down just adjacent to the verum tuck. No, and this is the main problem of this procedure, that there is a long learning curve. And uh, the, the, the surgeons that use this procedure are the innovative surgeons, not the, the big mass of the, the urologic uh, surgeon, which they are used uh, or a uh, turf or green like leather or the hola, which is all of them are similar uh, procedures. Here the red, what spot did you see is the ending beam. And here it starts to uh, uh, peel out the prostate and they push it into the bladder. Like to peel an orange from the inside out. But the main invent the main advantage of this uh, procedure is that uh, in, in, in one time uh, get rid of the prostate and the, the BPH uh, will be not uh, come back again. Uh, it depends on uh, the, the fluence. That usually it's a uh, power of uh, 100 watts that is divided into uh, 20 pools, so, so it's two joules, two joules per pulse. Uh, and the fiber, it's about uh, 550 micron, micron uh, diameter. So the area is very, very uh, small. Uh, the peak power is about, uh, about 10 uh, kilowatts per pulse. It's high, it's very high. Uh, also, absorption inside the water, so they, once uh, uh, you, use, you take the fiber uh, and put it inside water, there, you hear it like a boom, 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 because of the collapse and the uh, collapse, because of the bubble and the collapse of uh, the bubble. Which is lead us to the next, uh, next application that uh, 
uh, you because uh, once a surgeon uh, pushes the just a second because once a uh, surgeon pushes a laser, he can, uh, in, uh, a urologic uh, surgeon, uh, he wants to use it for another application, which is uh, stone fragmentation. Stone can be in the kidney or in the urethra uh, or in the bladder. If it's in the kidney, uh, so it's uh, done uh, with uh, a surgery uh, called the PCNL. If it's in the urethra, so it's uh, in the bladder. So it's uh, with the minimal invasive procedure uh, without to cut uh, anything. And there are a few, uh, few solutions for it. There is one solution uh, from the outside with the ultrasound, which is uh, non-invasive at all, uh, but it's limited to uh, different uh, stone types, um, etc. cetera. Uh, there is uh, mi the minimal, uh, among the minimal uh, invasive uh, solution, there is a solution uh, with the ultrasound, which is very popular, uh, with the uh, electrohydraulic, and with lasers. Among the laser, with the homing laser, is the most uh, popular, and actually it's the gold standard uh, to use uh, homing laser among the laser for uh, stone uh, fragmentation. So how it works? Uh, here the mechanism is a bit uh, different. It's a combination of the photomechanical uh, and the photothermal uh, uh, phenomena. Uh, once uh, a pulse uh, becomes uh, inside the pulse, it's released inside the water, while the fiber is uh, immersed uh, in the water, so a bubble, there is an ablation, and there is a bubble of uh, air that uh, exists, and there, the fiber, the, the bubble is ar around the fiber. So uh, the light goes through and does not absorb, which is very, very good, because it's, very absor it's absorbed very fast in the water, and, and, uh, and, and, and then if it's close enough uh, to the stone, it's uh, mm -hmm. transfer the energy uh, to the stone. It's uh, called the modus effect, from, like from our history, that all the water go to the sides. And uh, uh, part of the energy is uh, go to the stone and uh, uh, absorb in the water that inside the stone <coughs> and uh, build up uh, a pressure. On the other side, after the bubble is collapsed, there is an optical breakdown and a shock wave which is responsible for the stone fragmentation. Uh, the collapse uh, effect that you can see if the pulse width is uh, tens or hundreds of uh, microseconds, uh, then the modus affects uh, code, and then it's not uh, only photomechanical, it's also photothermal. If the pulse width is less than one microsecond, and of course, assume the same energy, same energy delivered in very short pulse, so it's only photomechanical uh, effect. And uh, here you can see uh, an uh, image uh, with the fast uh, camera that they uh, taken uh, with the wild a fiber was inserted into a bowl of uh, water and uh, we see how the bubble is developed and how the bubble is pulled up and from the upper image we can see that with the very short pulse only bubble uh, uh, only bubble uh, create and then collapse and then it's like an uh, electrohydraulic uh, uh, solution which is mechanical, simply mechanical solution with a long, uh, long uh, pulse width it's a combination of it all the image here with the uh, fiber geometry of uh, 365 uh, micron and uh, energy of about uh, 800 uh, millijoule, which is a uh, high energy. Uh, all of them with the homium uh, light laser. <coughs> homium light, yag laser. And now I want to see you some uh, demonstration to see how the, fr the fragmentation happen in practice. So just a second. Here it's a movie from, all, all the movies are uh, from uh, YouTube, so it's uh, from, uh, available, uh, public available for everyone. Uh, here it's uh, from, uh, from uh, Luminis. I will go. Uh, here it's how, how, how it's looked like. I will go. Hologram confirms that we are in the kidney. We replace the wire back in the kidney. Here you see the blue I is the uh, actually the fiber the plaid. Uh, that, uh, the, the fiber jacket actually that uh, we see wire is placed to drain the it's inserted the and we pass a 12, 14 year old access sheet over one of the wires leaving one wire outside the access sheet that's the kidney wire once the act up into the kidney and you uh, hear what's, what's the, the uh, surgeon there uh, see during the procedure just let some of this, uh, contrast wash out so you can see our wire up in the upper 
pull the kidney. So the first thing we do is we visually inspect the entire kidney to sort of see what we need to treat. And you can see that's a uh, stone on a uh, Randall's plaque below it, which we'll eventually laser. And so, yeah, there we go. That's going to be too big to display, so I'm treating the site here. Okay. When you do intra-renal laser lip trips, you invariably use a 200 micron uh, fiber. Because By setting different parameters for the laser, we can uh, control how we uh, uh, fragment so the stones. Really if we do a fine uh, fragmentation, or if uh, we use uh, high energy uh, to break it into small parts and then find fragmentation, and there are a few uh, techniques uh, that uh, are uh, discussed uh, in the literature and in the conferences, how to do it efficiently. Pull the laser fiber just back into the scope, and then maneuver into the calyx. Okay, let's start here, it's uh, like a fine fragmentation or, or a stone uh, dusting. So you can see the technique uh, is just to paint the, the stone. So it's basically just stay on the surface um, and, and literally try to make dust. Uh, try not to bury the tip uh, and, and try to do this for as much of the stone as you can before you crack it. Uh, this is my preferred technique. I mean, I find it to be uh, a little bit easier, and also, you know, you could, it's cost saving in theory if you don't need to use a basket, so it's been my preference. Plus, at these low energy settings, you don't have to strip the fiber. Uh, when you start using higher energy settings, uh, the tip of the fiber will degrade. And then you're having to pull the fiber out, strip the tip. Um, and again, the important thing here is making sure you have clear visualization of the tip of your fiber. So. The principles of dusting stones with the Holmian laser basically comes down to wanting to fragment the stones into as small pieces as possible uh, without creating large fragments. Uh, essentially, uh, the benefit is you don't often need to use a basket to retrieve fragments, so there's some cost benefit to that. Additionally, in certain cases, particularly softer stones, it's quicker. Um, we use low energy settings to create very small fragments. Uh, in particular, I like to use 0.2 joules and 50 hertz. This provides 10 watts of power, but at a very low energy setting. There's been studies that show that using 0.2 joules creates fragments as small as one, smaller even than one to two millimeters. Uh, it also helps to preserve the tip of the fiber. So this works really well on, on softer stones. Um, when you have really hard stones like calcium oxide monohydrate, it can be harder to dust the stone. And that's when I would consider using a, a setting to fragment the stone. So I get that free floating fragment box while it's still big. And you can see there are harder portions of this stone. Uh, but because it's nice and contained in the calyx, you can kind of just sit there and let it bounce around and, and make it into dust. So essentially, just Again, it's just with care, staying on the surface of the stone, working side to side. You don't want to bury your tip. Um, and basically just working the edges down. Uh, and it's basically, you're just trying to melt the stone away. Uh, it's really pretty simple. When it cracks like that, I just try to concentrate on some of the bigger pieces. Uh, and uh, eventually, uh, as the stone continues to break up like this, uh, you eventually just sort of sit the fiber in the middle of the calyx and sort of work and let it bounce around. It's a contact laser, so you know you won't damage the renal parenchyma unless you come in contact with it. The depth of the homium laser, the depth of penetration of tissue is really less than a millimeter. You really have to sort of put the fiber on the tissue and laser into it. Uh, um, but you do want to be aware the patient's obviously breathing and that adds a layer of complexity because the kidney is moving. We uh, use slow, subtle movements to paint the surface of the stone and try not to crack the stone in half and try not to bury the tip of the fiber into the stone. Because you're using such a low energy setting, each sort of hit of the stone is not as powerful. So actually when I get to fragments like this, I like to switch. We go to 0.5 and 20. So I'll turn my energy up and my rate down. Uh, because each shot becomes more effective and the rate slows down. You're still using 10 watts of power. I think the advantage of using a high power or 100 watt laser is you're able to deliver the amount of energy you want. So for us, 
10 watts, 0.2 joules, 50 hertz, which aids in making the dusting a lot quicker. But at this point, it's very hard to just pinpoint these stones, so just kind of sit in the calyx and, and, and let them bounce around and try to literally make them into dust. And as a point of reference, the tip of that fiber is uh, 0.2 millimeters. Um, so these pieces are already pretty small. So uh, this is how it's done. And I think the way it is uh, understood. Um, now let's speak about the CO2 laser. With the CO2 laser, it's actually the ideal laser, especially one that we have in our web guide that it's able to deliver it to anywhere in the body. But since there is very high absorption, around 893, uh, one over a centimeter, and pressure just of, uh, around the 20 uh, micron. So the uh, CO2 laser cannot work for large application, for stone fragmentation or for BPA, because all the energy will absorb in the water in the irrigation. Uh, but there is a lot of uh, other application that uh, can be used. Uh, this image uh, that you see from the side, it's uh, from a company that's called the Laser Sculpel. They use it for dentistry by the dentist. And, uh, and there is uh, the main advantage that it's the laser can uh, also coagulate the blood vessel, which is very, very important. And le let's see a small, uh, a short uh, movie that explains it. Uh, among uh, the application that uh, use uh, with the CO2, it's, uh, there is the otolaryngology, gynecology, ophthalmology. There is one uh, a company in Israel that is for uh, ophthalmology for glaucoma, uh, neurosurgery and the general surgery. Uh, it's also with the, with the robotic uh, machine, uh, the Da Vinci, that probably you heard about it. And let's see a short movie from a company that called the OmniGuide, the company that developed uh, the uh, WaveGuide, and explore it will wrap up uh, this uh, laser tissue in interaction. Uh, with uh, some uh, few uh, applications. Uh, this is the only guide, and here you see the uh, well guide. I was looking it's here, it's with the handpiece to be very similar for the surgeon, uh, like uh, the tools that they, they, they use uh, to work. Uh, it, once uh, people that uh, search in Google uh, medical application, surgical application, laser, CO2 uh, will, uh, will rise uh, from the, a lot of uh, results because it's uh, used for a lot of uh, application and not limit for application like uh, urology or just aesthetics. Use the uh, absorption uh, or absorption depth. And so it's absorbed in the water. Here are some uh, applications which are used.
practicals. It's it's not it's very depends on the application. It's not in the picosecond uh, regime. It's much longer. It's very depends uh, um, how how use it. Uh, for example, if it's coagulation, so it's relative long uh, pulse, uh, which can be milliseconds. <coughs> if it's for uh, ablation, uh, so it, it's much uh, less, uh, around microseconds, ten microseconds. This is this is the. <coughs> This is just an uh, order of uh, magnitude, and there is an static application uh, with the ultra pulse that it's less, and uh, uh, CO2 laser can be excited with an RF source. So by this, is, there is an option uh, to do an uh, ultra pulse, uh, one after the other, like with the pulse with the modulation. It becomes very narrow, very short, and, and, and the pulse itself, the envelope itself, so it's also very short. Second. What is your interest? Okay, so uh, here are the reference, all the picture here and all uh, all the uh, uh, articles that uh, have uh, been uh, uh, summarized for this uh, lecture. And now a bit about the interest here, about uh, ourselves. Uh, we are a photonics consulting practice that is uh, sitting in uh, Matam. Uh, we provide service uh, for uh, a lot of uh, medical uh, companies, uh, among them there is uh, um, Illuminage, which is a uh, Synergy Beauty. A lot of uh, entrepreneurs that uh, came to us and we help them to develop a uh, light-based uh, solution, uh, whether if it's uh, light, uh, whether if it's laser, LED, or a uh, xenon lamp for uh, for a static application, for example, or whether if it's uh, a sensor, uh, one uh, one sensor, single sensor array, uh, and of course systems that combine the, all of them uh, together. Uh, this is how a typical uh, typical uh, setup in the lab it's uh, work in order to evaluate laser in order to uh, to uh, develop a laser that it's uh, appropriate uh, for uh, uh, the application uh, which take into account out of a parameter as uh, you see um, in short we provide a service of uh, design and development of uh, electro optics uh, systems uh, com uh, everything today we need uh, to operate, for example, if we need to operate laser with driver and to measure it with photodiode, so uh, we also uh, uh, alliance partner of a national instrument and we build a, a system for command and uh, control. And uh, we provide a consultation and uh, support uh, also for existing product. Uh, we are very uh, wanted to be, in, uh, to be involved uh, with the faculty and uh, to cooperate uh, together and to give our, uh, our specialization uh, in the field. Uh, this is all. So uh, thank you very much.